One of the questions I get so often is if God is good, God is love, God is peace, why the heck is there so much confusion and division and unkindness in the world? Well, God left that to us. We're the ones that decide what our experience and our life is going to be. You see, on page one of his big, thick Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes tells us that the seed of freedom, seed of freedom is planted in the innermost being of everyone. And just like the prodigal son, who if you remember in that parable from Jesus, he took all his wealth and all his inheritance and went and squandered it on really high living, trying to find goodness and fun and joy in the material world until he lost everything, ended up living with the pigs, and remembered he had to go to his father's house where everything, all the goodness and peace and joy, everything he needed was there. Well, that's what's inside of us, that same recognition and knowing that if we want freedom and peace and love and kindness and goodness, it's already there. But we have to discover it for ourselves. We have to find it there and discover it. Now, along with the freedom that we've been given that's planted there is the freedom of choice and the freedom of free will. Free will can get us in a ton of trouble. Anybody else know about that? <laughs> can get us in trouble, but the good thing is it can get us out of trouble, too. When we start plugging into the right places, we can start remembering who we really are and that we have the freedom of choice. And another question that's asked often is, if God is love, why is there so much hate in the world? Well, remember, if we have choice, self-choice, we have to have things to choose from, right? If we only have one choice, if it's just love, we become, well, that wouldn't be so bad, would it? Never, but, but we wouldn't have the experience in the world. We have to be able to choose from this spectrum of emotions and feelings how we want to express life and what we want to be in life. When I think you were saying, Susan, one of the major endeavors of being human is to free ourselves from all limitation. If in any way in our mind we would think that God created anything in bondage, we would be d dishonoring and doubting the creative intelligence of God. You know, my dear friend from the 13th century, Rumi, a little piece of his poem, which I'll re hopefully read the whole thing if I remember, but a bigger piece of it, says, why do you stay in prison, any of us? when the door is so wide open. It's open for us. We remain captive to our negative thinking. We become imprisoned by limitations we've put on ourselves. We're free to think and be and know and create whatever we want. That freedom is always there, but we must, to combat the limitations, we're gonna have to open up to greater understanding and wisdom and learning and knowing. One of the things that Ernest Holmes talks about in one little tiny section of one little book, but it's something that I, I think of so often when I, I read the poem uh, of, of Rumi's that says, out beyond, beyond right doing and wrong doing, there is a field, I'll meet you there. Ernest says, you know, people that are too narrow in their thinking, too narrow, have no room to grow or create or become something more. And people that are too wide and broad in their thinking have no roots. To me, when I was reading that, I said, you know when you're wound too tight, you snap? Have you ever done that? You're so wound up in something, you just snap. And if you're so wide, mamby-pamby about things, it's just you have no roots and you fall apart. So we have to... that. He even mentions the middle path, and I know that's the middle way, the middle path, and that's an Eastern philosophy from Buddhism, is the middle way. 
And at first I read that and I said, was that like a spiritual bypass? You just don't care about anything? Absolutely not. It's that open space in the middle where you can accept extremes, where you know that life is about extremes, where you're open to listening and understanding and also creating and growing and believing there's something possible, something more than this. I think it was Wayne Dyer who wrote a book, You'll See It When You Believe It. Remember that? You'll see it when you believe it. Not you'll believe it when you see it, but you'll see it when you believe it. It was Jesus who really introduced us to a whole new way of thinking. He said, it's done unto you as you believe. Your beliefs create your experience. What you're looking at, you're looking with. And this was a cute little story I found. Once upon a time, there was a man who lost his ax. His ax. I don't know how that sounded when I said it. And it was missing. <laughs> to be really careful sometimes. But and he, he, it was missing, and he suspected the neighbor's son. The neighbor's son looked like a thief. He walked like a thief, and he talked like a thief. Well, about a week later, the man found his ax when he ax when he was digging in the valley. And he went home, and he looked at his neighbor's son again. I can think about times like this for me. The neighbor's son looked like a child. He spoke like a child, and he walked like a child. Where in our life do we let our beliefs tell us what we're seeing? When we have a limiting belief, and believe me, if you believe in limitations, you're going to find them everywhere to prove your point. You'll see them everywhere. But if we can expand those limitations to bigger possibilities, to be more creative and understanding, our whole world is going to change. And we look at something that we say is bad and wrong. The only thing that I can, some things are on the spectrum of yucky. And we know that. But we also have to ask ourselves, where am I like that, to be able to recognize that? And how can I lift myself up? Because it's by opening ourselves up can we reach into that inner seed of freedom more easily and let it blossom in our life, if we're able to do that and understand. So if we find ourselves extremely living in any way, melt back to center, melt back to center. Um, when you and I find that we, we're in the consciousness business, and that's a good place to be, because we can always grow and expand. When we find ourselves limited, we ask, well, how can I grow? Well, number one, we need to grow in our mental expansion. I don't know how you do it, but I usually just pick a book off my shelf, and I open it and see if there's an answer there. Or I listen carefully to what people are saying to me, because there's always a truth of something that I need to know. Or I pick up a friend and call and just listen so I can understand what life is all about. We need to expand ourselves mentally, and we need to open our hearts in faith. Because when we're open, the world is going to be a much freer and more beautiful place. There's a piece of a paragraph in Ernest Holmes' book, This Thing Called You, and it's God speaking to the individual. And I want to read this because It really speaks to where the responsibility lies. We like to point the finger out there. It's someone else's problem. But you know how many fingers we have pointing back at ourselves. So in this, I called it God is speaking. That's not the name of it, but that, that's what I called it. He says, all right, the game is yours. Play it as you see fit. I'm going to serve you, but don't fool yourself. I'm going to reflect right back to you with exactness what you really are. I'll say that again. I'm going to reflect right back to you with exactness exactly what you are. If you don't like what's happening, I am not going to be disturbed. You are the arbiter of your faith. You are the captain of your soul. I have given you all. 
I have implanted freedom, individuality, and self-choice within you. Finally, through experience, hopefully, I added that word, you will learn the better and wiser way. Hopefully, that's what we're here to do, learn. You will meet disappointment and sorrow. That's part of this life experience. But I have placed within you a compass and a chart. Placed with inside you a compass and a chart. There is a course you may pursue right now, which leads to happiness, to wholeness, to peace of mind, and to joy. But we have to do the work. And that's where that little quote by Rumi is expanded. He said, we have to let go of our fear-based thinking. Think of who the thinker is anyway. Did you get that? You have to let go of your fear-based thinking because think of who the thinker is anyway. And he goes on to say, it's you, it's me. We're all doing the thinking and we can think better because we'll know better. And that's when he says, why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? We have to right now do the second thing, move outside the tangle of fear thinking. Take a breath and sit in silence. Sit in silence. Slow down and down in always widening rings of being. Let's take a breath on that one and just untangle our legs and our arms and open our mind with the mental expansion of knowing that life is good, that we are free, and open our hearts by letting go of the entangled feelings through forgiveness and understanding and faith that life is good no matter what we are seeing in the moment, that there's a goodness waiting to be expressed and revealed, that every place we are, no matter what, the power, the presence, the goodness, the peace, the freedom, the love of God is in this and every moment. And it's in this moment when we open ourselves, when we free ourselves and expand ourselves, that we understand we are here to be kind no matter what's going on around us, to share love no matter what we're seeing, to create no matter what it is, because the creative process is unlimited and we are here to grow and expand and become and have fun in living. We know that, we see it, we sense it, we fill our body with that right here and right now as in this moment. We know no matter what the outer experience is, there's a freedom in our mind right here and now, in our heart, right here and now, a freedom the love, to care, to know, and to be that expression of goodness, of light, of caring, of oneness, of unity, right here, right now, and always. And so it is. I believe in love. I believe in light. I believe in freedom. I believe in goodness. And I believe in all of us right here together. Thank you. And so it is.